Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another SkySwitch webinar. I'm Andy Abramson, Chief Marketing Officer for SkySwitch, and today we have a great topic and one which is really all about you, the reseller, being able to provide another service to your customer base that's something that's both timely and essential. We're going to talk all about SkySwitch's appointment reminders that are one of the newer features that's available from our V broadcast platform. Now, joining with joining me today, I'm really fortunate to have my good colleague and friend, Corey Stoker, our VP of support, who you know very, very well. And those of you who don't know him well, that means you don't need a lot of support, which is a great thing. And there are many of you who don't need support, which is a testament to the SkySwitch platform. Hi, Corey, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Great to be here. Thanks, Andy. And we're also going to be joined midway through with a former Sky Switcher, who many of you may know, who has helped many of you towards success. I'm talking about Clark DeLeon. Clark left Sky Switch just about the time we had Vectors last October to branch out on his own as one of you. And he's been making great use of appointment reminders and has some interesting tips to offer. So we're going to get into it with Clark midway through. And of course, we have at the controls, our marketing manager, Emily Vasquez, who does such a great job at not only attracting you to be part of the webinar, but also at keeping everybody so well informed. So with that, we're gonna dive into everything you need to know um, about Corey. He's been with us since 2016. He's grown our support team We've got 32 people. Man, we've grown a lot in the years since I joined. That's a testament to you, Corey, at keeping up with the growth of SkySwitch. And you've got nine years yes. of tech experience, a lot of yes. management experience. And what I really love about Corey is it's not about just solving support ticket issues. It's more about being proactive and identifying the trends and keeping our employee staff and our resellers well ahead of the game through education. Corey, what's been going on in that area just to give everybody some some insight as to where we are with support? Well, it's been interesting, especially in these strange times. I'm sure everyone's going through some interesting things uh, as of late. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of how to to scale a support team. And, and if you guys are small, some we have some resellers with small staffs and some with big staffs, but when it comes to scaling, it, it comes to uh, teaching everybody everything you can. Uh, if we can teach the, the staff and the resellers, uh, we can eliminate uh, tickets for, for questions about uh, any kind of uh, like SIP or, or voice over IP based thing or how to use a product. And uh, it helps us out as well as helps you out, uh, makes you happier. I'm here to help. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy voice over IP and this industry and, and talking to each and every one of you. So you can definitely, there, there will be a an appointment scheduling link for me towards the end of this. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, we can definitely schedule something and have a conversation. Now, Corey, I have to ask, will you get an appointment reminder from that? <laughs> I will, but in another form. In uh, I already have appointment reminders that are going to pop up on my screen, so kind of unnecessary with this application. But we'll get to see how this application can be really useful for your customers. So let's dive into that. Today we're going to talk about what SkySwitch's V broadcast is and really how it's evolved and what's going to be coming down the pike in the future. We're also going to really dive deeply into appointment reminders, tell you what works and what types of businesses can benefit from it. And honestly, we were brainstorming just yesterday as we were getting ready for today's webinar. And there's so many different avenues where an appointment reminder can work from the benefit for the benefit of the customer, but also for the benefit of the business owner. It's also going to talk about how you can set yourself apart from various competitions. Um, we're also going that's where we're going to have Clark come in and talk about how he's using this and some of the things he set up for his customers. Um, one thing about appointment reminders, like so many things that become automated, there are restrictions. So one of the things Corey's gonna talk about 
are the restrictions that impact you and the requirements that you need to be aware of so your customers or you don't do the equivalent of um, SMS spam. Uh, you'll get a live demo. Live demos are always so much fun to do uh, of how you can use appointment reminders from a customer view and how texting and call queuing work. And then we'll wrap all that up with a Q&A session where you get to ask your questions. We'll also talk about your prizes, which today are courtesy of SkySwitch. We decided to go into the SkySwitch prize closet and we know not all of you made it to IT Expo. We've got some great swag, the SkySwitch socks, shirts, hats, and pop sockets, all for you, um, for the five uh, who get lucky enough to be drawn. And that'll happen, um, we'll notify you in our update post webinar. So with that, Corey, why don't you give an overview in history and also talk about the broadcast and you know what's it's been doing and what's coming. Sure. So V broadcast was introduced back in 2017. Actually, I first got my hands on it in October of 2016 and started messing around with it. And it's been an application that was lightly used. Uh, we had some resellers using it at the start for for very specific purposes, and it was basically uh, built to be a a dialer an auto dialer of sorts, but not to use as a telemarketing tool, more to inform your customers of, uh, or your, your end customers of announcements, whether it's, uh, hey, the gym is gonna be closed tomorrow due to something uh, perfect for, for this time uh, of sending announcements for business closures, but that's what it was initially designed for. So it, it started out as just a, a call campaign, uh, management platform uh, that would send up to five calls at once. Uh, you could just send a simple announcement or you could connect the the end user to an agent if they press the button so you can connect it directly to your call queue. It's slowly evolved as we saw what the uses were for it, what the use cases were for it. And it had a huge rewrite in October of last year where we introduced SMS into it. So uh, October 2019, we, we brought in SMS broadcasting and February of this year, we introduced the appointment reminders. Uh, and the appointment reminders are incredibly useful uh, and that's why we're doing this video here. We, we've done a, a few blogs and talked about it. And we have some people utilizing it, but we think it could be utilized more than it currently is. Uh, it's a, a great tool overall, can be branded. Uh, it's free to, to add on to your dashboard. Uh, so there's there's no cost for setup. You just need to throw in a request to get the broadcast set up. And we will get into actually how to use the, the appointment reminders today. Uh, so it, it is a it's a it's a very useful tool and, and hopefully we'll see some of the uh, benefits for it here. So Great, when we Corey. so why don't you di why don't you dive in a little bit? You know, appointment reminders is something that it's been around for a few months, but I really think that it has a lot of functionality and the ability to deliver messages in a, obviously a timely way. Um, it's pretty new. Um, how about giving a really smooth overview of how this works, how the reseller you know, has to manage and do everything, but how the customer can actually take control of this as well? Sure, yeah, so the appointment reminder uh, portion of V broadcast, which is a, a very specific portion of it, uh, is a tool that's built with an open API. So you can uh, use other platforms or, or use tools like IFTTT or Zapier to integrate with it, which makes it so you can set up your appointment reminders with a, a third party integration fairly easily, uh, or you could even build your own custom program to send uh, webhooks to the appointment reminder application. Uh, and it can send, uh, either SMS or calls or both to users who have appointments. 
it's very uh, it's it's very easy to use. So your end customers, after a quick training, should be able to uh, to use it. If if you're just using the web interface, then uh, it's very simple. Uh, and if you're using another tool like Zapier, you could integrate with a CRM or an appointment scheduling application that that works with Zapier, and uh, then they don't even have to do anything different. Uh, the appointment reminders, once you get them set up and you figure out how to to integrate their platform to the to Zapier and uh, Zapier to to us, then it's very simple. And one of the things I'm going to show you today is how to use Zapier. Uh, to to send over to the appointment reminder to get appointments in there. But essentially, the appointment reminder is going to be very useful for any time that you need to send reminders that are based on a date. So uh, there's so many use cases for this, and Clark brought up some interesting ones to me before this call, which he'll talk about shortly. Uh, but I think about appointment reminders anytime I'm thinking about uh, doctor's offices or dentists or uh, or spas or nail salons, anywhere where you have to set an appointment, golf courses, the, the limitations or the possibilities are, are endless, I should say. You know, when I think about this, you get all kinds of details about how you have to set things up. And I was thinking that right now I get calendar alerts from Google, but with what you're saying is I could put a Zapier uh, in the uh, zap in the middle and say forget about doing it this way. I don't just want the calendar. I might not be in front of something. Call me or send me a text message over to my phone. And previously you'd have to go through a lot of steps to do that. But what you're saying is build a zap, and all of a sudden there's an appointment reminder coming from SkySwitch through the reseller or from you know from the customer of the reseller. I really like that. Can you talk a little bit of how you manage appointments and what reporting looks like? And more importantly, dig in a little bit to the configuration of reminders, whether they're voice or SMS, because I think it's important that everyone understands that this isn't just a text message. You can also turn it into a voice reminder too. Yeah, so the appointments are managed basically on a, a CSV style spreadsheet. They're also uh, in the applications, so they're essentially stored in a database. Uh, but you can import, export users and appointment times and phone numbers into a spreadsheet, uh, or you can use the API to, to get the appointments into the application. Now, they can also be automatically deleted from the application, uh, and you can do that based on, on any, any number of time frames. Uh, so, uh, you could delete appointments that are older than seven days, for example. Now, the SMS reminders are uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, you do have to use a toll-free number for SMS, and that's just because of SMS delivery rates. As we are not a wireless carrier, your best chance of getting an, M an SMS through every time is to use a toll-free number. Uh, using a, a local number would especially on a platform that's sending uh, multiple texts to multiple people, you have a, a much higher chance of getting blocked or marked as spam and then your text message is not getting through at all. So we do require a toll-free number for the SMS portion, while voice reminders can still use a local number. Now for the voice reminders, you have the ability to send reminders with a pre-recorded message, uh, or you could use our Amazon Poly integration. So there's a text box. You can type in uh, a message. You can use variables like the appointment holder's name, date, time, and uh, Amazon Poly will do voice transcription uh, in real time on the call. So your end user can get uh, a friendly greeting with their name saying, Hey, Corey, you have an appointment at so-and-so time. Just a reminder. Thanks. Goodbye. Corey, with, with all that set up, how much configuration work is 
on the part of either the customer or the reseller coming through the dashboard? Are we talking hours of setup time or are we talking minutes? Uh, we're talking minutes, really. Uh, so your initial setup with the broadcast may take a little bit of time, uh, but this is a one-time setup where you're setting up a trunk. Uh, we would be adding it, adding the broadcast to your dashboard. You set up a, a trunk uh, one time there, and then from from then on out, uh, we're looking at minutes in configuration for these. Um, I would say I set one up this morning as a test, and I would say it took five minutes at the most, uh, where I was sending out text and phone calls. Now, it's possible to have multiple reminders. It's not just about setting up a single reminder that does one thing to work across all your customers or all your employees or all the folks you have to notify. This they can set, it's limitless, isn't it? They can have dozens upon dozens of different types of reminders when they're opening, when they're closing, reminders that you have to lock the door at a certain time at a place of work um, that closes at a set time. I remember having a friend who was in the restaurant business and he would get upset when his staff would close too early. And, you know, what I'm what I would say is now you can send out alerts to people saying, remember to lock the doors at 9.45, count out at 10 and leave the building by 10.30. As a reminder, all these things are possible, but there's no limit, am I right? You can set up dozens upon dozens of these for each for different tasks or activities? Right, there, there is really no limit. You, you, I believe, are limited to 100 recipients in a single group. Uh, but you can set up as many reminders as you want. Now, the platform itself has a limitation of sending out, oh, I, I believe it's one SMS per second. So if you have a bunch of activity going on on the server, then uh, it may be queued a few seconds uh, while, while other texts are being sent out. And that's really to prevent us as, again, being marked as a spam or, or bot type server. Uh, but other than that, there's really no limitations. As long as you can set a date and time uh, along with the event that you're trying to remind of, uh, then you're free to do as many as you want. So let's say I have a dentist appointment at 10 o'clock on Thursday. And the person, the, the dentist set up through the telephony system with the reseller's help, they can set up a reminder for 10 o'clock, but does it simply work off of the time of my appointment or can they set a parameter that says, send this reminder at you know three o'clock the day before and then send another one at nine, one hour before the appointment the day of, you know, so that yeah. literally it can rip yeah, so right it, through the yeah. database. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they would set up their uh, reminder uh, based on a, a time of day which they prefer to send out the reminders. So it's not going to be exactly like 24 hours before uh, or um, a set time range before, but uh, you're going to set the, the time in advance that you want to send. So if you set your, your messages to go out at 4 p.m. the previous day, it'll go through and look for all appointments on the next day. And at 4 p.m., it'll shoot them all off. Now you can use your, your appointment groups for, for multiple reminders. So you could certainly do like a, a two day before and then a one day before reminder. Um, but yeah, certainly it's, there's, uh, it is a, a one time, a one time a day thing where, where all your messages will get queued up at that time. Um, but a dentist is a great example. And as we were talking just a second ago, I was thinking uh, if you have shift work for employees, say at like a restaurant, you could be reminding your employees of their shift the next day. And just a, another uh, good use case that just popped in my head for this. That shift worker one, Corey, is a great example. Going back to the dentist could also, you know, let's just switch to a doctor or a medical labs example. A lot of times you're going to the labs and you have to fast for so many hours before you either give blood or something else. Is it possible in the message reminder that gets sent out or the voice reminder 
to actually dig into the specifics of your calendar item or your appointment that's been set and give additional details like remember to fast for 12 hours if you're going to have a blood draw. It's not yet at this time. Uh, now, you could certainly categorize your appointments uh, and send different uh, reminders. So, so you could set up a reminder for regular doctor's visit and another reminder for uh, people who have to fast and send out different messages for those. Uh, however, uh, this is a platform that's being developed and, and worked on every day. So the, the possibilities are somewhat endless and we're open to taking suggestions. We can't guarantee that the suggestions will be implemented. Uh, but if you submit feature requests based on this tool, they will go to our development manager, Alona Giga, uh, and she'll look at them and consider them and see uh, what the benefit is. And we would certainly be interested in uh, making the tool more robust. Uh, and that's definitely one thing that, that I've thought about uh, in the past few days is having a side note or a side variable that we could throw in to the uh, to the reminders, either SMS or call. So good, good point there, Andy, for sure. Well, that's, you know, that's, you know, one of the things that, you know, the variable nature of, of an, of our API, we can do a lot of things on vBroadcast. I'm going to bring in Clark to Leon right now. Clark has been working hard as a reseller, putting on customers, buying devices. But he's also been using the appointment reminders and Clark, this is helping you win some business how as a as a sky switch reseller are you using the appointment reminder platform to set you apart from say the big v if that, or at&t or somebody else as a competitor in your area what's going on and welcome to the broadcast thank you uh for having me yes um i signed up a client um that is interested with uh um sms on his business he's a franchise owner um he basically really wanted to communicate with his client through sms because that's really um the big thing right now um without calling them or emailing them so i shared with him the appointment reminder and um she was he was uh really interested about it and um while i was trying to um um doing a demo with him he asked me about um like a sort of like an automated SMS response. I'm like, oh, then I thought to myself while I was demoing, oh, why don't we uh, combo, you know, make a combo of SMS responder and appointment reminder. <laughs> so it worked out well. Um, the flow of his um, of his um, SMS is now, um, one thing that he he realized that you really have to manage this um, if you are um, if you want this to be successful the management part is really important uh, and he was he was really into it now his um his flow of using both of the SMS responder and SMS um, appointment reminder is um, he has a, an application for his calendar that he can grab information and he uses the responder to confirm those appointments from his client. Once the confirm um, from the responder is confirmed, he puts all his client's information in the appointment reminder and then um, he gets the appointment from there. Um, he's doing a manual right now for uh, using the, um, the uh, application, the web application, but I'm going to show him a demo uh, next week for uh, using uh, a Zapier, uh, using the Google, um, Google Sheet um, integration. So it worked out for him. Um, you know, I, I hit two birds um, on one stone, so <laughs> um, he's paying me for both uh, um, services. So, so we're, we're using the... Uh, oh, go ahead, Andy. No, Clark, what, what I just heard you say is, not only are you selling them telecommunication service, you're giving him a professional service around appointment reminders. Now, were you getting paid just to set it up or are you also providing ongoing care and feeding of the appointment reminder service to the customer of Team Up Telecom? Um, for now, I'm, uh, I'm charging him for setup, um, but anytime he asks for help, um, I tell him that um, if there's any um, other um, product um, settings or any other settings that he would like from the previous setting, I will I will charge him for a fee. 
So professional services being offered around yeah. a service that Corey right now, we don't really charge for this platform. How, how's all that work? Right. So the, the V broadcast is kind of a, a cherry on top uh, of the web centrics uh, solution. So we do charge a, uh, a there's a, a slight upcharge in the per minute cost, but uh, overall the, the V broadcast platform is free to, to activate, uh, free to use. Uh, and we, uh, as many of you know right now, and to avoid questions at the end, we, we do have uh, cost in place for, for sending SMS uh, over a certain number. Uh, but those are currently not being uh, billed for. So uh, eventually they will work and you can refer back to your MSA as far as uh, SMS pricing. Uh, but essentially right now, this is a free uh, implementation. Clark, Richard sees this, and we'll have questions at the end, but Richard asked something which I think is really apropos right now. How did you go about setting up your pricing as a non-recurring um, cost setup? And what, if anything, is a monthly recurring cost for the feature that you're able to charge? Um, right now, it's really, uh, it was kind of difficult because it's really um, for client base. Um, I'm, I, and I'll be honest, I'm really still learning on pricing. Um, I'm charging him, if you're asking about the appointment reminder, if that's a question, um, I'm charging him $20 for that, <laughs> for just uh, setting that. And then $19.99 for any setup that I do for the SMS is always $19.99. And then uh, if there's any changes aside from my setup, I charge him again $19.99 because honestly, it, it, it won't take long to do it. It won't take long, like probably 10 minutes max to really set up any changes aside from the initial uh, setup. That's so what I do, do some math for Richard. Sorry. So do some math for Richard real quick. That would be you're you're billing at twenty dollars to nineteen ninety nine to do the work. So it's called twenty dollars, and yeah. so then you're you're basing your hourly rate at one hundred and twenty an hour. Um, so basically, if if I'm doing the math and thinking how Clark set this up because he understands the platform, he's able to allocate um, one sixth of an hour to the um, set up so 10 minutes and and is billing in a um, in a proportional rate versus billing for a full hour obviously you as a reseller can all set your own pricing you yes. may already have pricing and that way but to look at it effectively and 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 fairly if it's only taking you 10 minutes you want to bill them for half an hour because you only bill in half hour increments and your billing rates the same as Clark's at 120 you would bill 60. If you're benevolent and it took you 10 minutes and you only want to bill them for 10 minutes, then you bill at 20 like Clark. So that was a real good question from Richard. We're going to go back and, and, and answer more questions later on today in the webinar. But I want to switch back over to um, Corey because now that we've got resellers using this and resellers like Clark setting them up, we want to make sure they stay out of trouble. And yes. I know just because I spent a lot of time looking at Stir Shaken and spent a lot of time looking at the California Consumer Privacy Act, there's a lot of you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. It's not like, oh, spamming is email and but they'll never do anything to us. This has teeth. You want to talk about the restrictions? Absolutely. So SMSs kind of fall under the same category as faxing, uh, and the FCC is much more strict on faxing than they are uh, robocallers, uh, surprisingly, as far as fines go. Uh, so you basically cannot send SMSs unsolicited. Your customers have to have some sort of sign-up uh, measure in place. So, so the, the person who's receiving the SMS, even if they are an active customer, has to approve of the SMS in some form or fashion. Maybe it's in their initial contract or or maybe they just sign up for SMS, uh, but they do have to sign up. Uh, unsolicited text messages, because they fall under the, the same guidelines as unsolicited faxes, uh, can result in huge fines and just looking through some examples, kind of FCC sets these fines uh, as as they want, but 
Uh, I found one example where uh, a, a large company sending faxes was fined $11,000 per fax. Uh, so <laughs> you don't want those kind of fines coming back to your customer or you, and you definitely want to follow uh, as much as you can with the with the opt-in and opt-out policy. Uh, so that's the big part for, for opting in. As far as the opt-out uh, requirements, there is uh, some automation in the system. So if someone says stop or unsubscribe uh, to in response to the text message, it'll automatically put them on a list. And it's a, a global list for the reseller account where they won't be able to be contacted again. Uh, the only way that they can be removed from that list uh, is by saying subscribe or uh, I believe the other word is start. But we it's in our documentation, but I would have to confirm that. Uh, as far as the the dialer, so the the call part of this, uh, we we ourselves as SkySwitch don't want to uh, host a, a telemarketing platform. Uh, so the the dialer uh, in general for phone calls should be used for uh, contacting your customers, making them aware of appointments or uh, or announcements, and shouldn't be used as a uh, platform to uh, broadcast to your customers as far as like uh, something used as like a robo dialer. Uh, but as far as the FCC goes, uh, you you want to to have some uh, measure in place so your your end customers are signing people up. Uh, it could be as simple as a question of do you want to receive text message reminders, uh, yes or no. Uh, they check a box for yes and uh, you add them to the list based on that. Now, Corey, I get some of these messages every once in a while reminders, alerts, sometimes I don't even know who they're coming from because they are spam, but they do have to include some type of message. Usually I get a message that says stop or opt out. You have to enter, and if you do that, you then get a reply that says you've been taken off the list. Do we offer that same feature? Uh, you can certainly add those messages uh, yourself, or you can add those to the end of your messages yourself, and it's a it's good practice to do so. It's not a requirement that you do that as you're sending these to your, uh, usually to your own customer base, but uh, it's it's definitely a good practice to do so just so the end user knows how to stop the messages. Now, I think a lot of people are conditioned on sending stop to business SMS, and that gets them removed from the list, but uh, it's it's your call on on these. So it's up to the individual, it's up to the customer really to make that decision of whether they want to be um, offending their customer base or whether they want to be friendly to their customer base. But oftentimes, you know, phone numbers get recycled and you end up getting messages that you didn't tell your uh, hair salon or you didn't tell your barber or your doctor, or your dentist, your personal trainer that you changed phone numbers and your appointment comes up and they're sending out an appointment reminder to you thinking, you know, I'll, I'll send Corey, it's time for your physical training session at the gym, I'll see you at three o'clock tomorrow, Corey, and Corey's changed his phone number. And it goes to the next person. The person looks and goes, I don't have an appointment reminder. And then they send stop. And that, so it's important to think about adding that type of message and then the database, does, would it then automatically update or do they need to write a rule? How would they do something like that? Would that be another? It is automatically. Yeah, it is It is automatically updated. So if someone replies uh, to the text message, uh, the word stop or unsubscribe, we will catch it and throw it on a list. Uh, and the list is in plain sight. You'll see when we actually go into the dialer. Uh, and there's no way to put that number back on there other than the the person who owns a number sending a resubscribe message. Great, so we're doing everything we can to help you as resellers, help your customers to stay within the guidelines of the FCC. Corey, I think it'd be great to, you know, we can talk all about this, but there's nothing better than 
a live demo. So why don't you give that a shot? And then after that, we'll come back and we, can, we can talk all about how the resellers can get started with appointment reminders. So let's go to the live demo. Right, so this is uh, V broadcast outside of the dashboard. It would also be available inside of the dashboard. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the application, but we're gonna focus specifically on appointment reminders and the setup for them here. They are very easy to, to get going. Actually, I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I first jumped into this and, and said, oh, I got another thing to figure out, and it only took a few minutes to actually figure it out. Uh, so this is the V broadcast interface. It is uh, brandable. Uh, there's a lot of automation into the interface uh, that's integrated uh, to your reseller account or to the, the user. So we'll automatically pull domain names, we'll automatically pull users and so on. Uh, I have a list of all my domains uh, and I have a specific domain called a V dialer test uh, in which I use for testing and demos and so on. So uh, there's two major parts to this, uh, and then there's some some other pieces. We have uh, recipient group management, and this is where we will manage our recipient group. And I'll kind of do a quick overview of, of what you would uh, be interested in here, or you should be interested in here. Uh, so the recipient group is where you're going to manage your, your appointment groups. Uh, we have both the unsubscribed SMS numbers, which we just talked about. So if anyone says stop here, uh, it'll appear on this list and there's no way to take it off, uh, even for us, uh, because we want to respect those individuals' uh, right to not receive the, the spam messages. We also have a do not call management list. Now, we do not subscribe to the, the do not call uh, FCC uh, list. So these are on your own for, for managing. If you have a group of numbers, you can import them for, uh, for do not call management. Uh, we have the actual reminder management itself, uh, and we'll go into this as we set it up, and then we have reports for the, for the reminder. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll set up one through the interface. Uh, you could see, I feel like some people may use the interface to set up appointment reminders, but ideally you would want to set this up through another application. So what I'm gonna do is create a recipient group here. We'll just name the group. I'll just call it the webinar. We're going to set this to be an appointment reminder group. The differences between the two is we get an API token and we get some automation for deleting past appointments. Uh, I can, you can actually come back and view the API token again, or if your token is, you believe compromised or something uh, funny happened, and you just wanna refresh it, you can generate a new token, which will scrap the old token. So after this webinar, I'll be scrapping that token, uh, which is basically like an authorization key. Now, once the group is created, I, I can set up individual appointments here. Uh, so I can do this uh, one by one. Uh, I can add the recipient name, uh, phone number, and set the appointment date and time. So if I set this tomorrow at noon, and then we're going to choose the type uh, and this this kind of coordinates along with the reminder itself. Uh, the reminder, as you're setting up reminders, you can set them up as call campaigns, SMS campaigns, uh, or to do both. What this option does is kind of opts them into a certain uh, either SMS or call. So if you set your, your reminder uh, campaign to, to send both call and SMS, but you have certain users that only want calls and certain users that only have SMS, uh, it will follow the, the settings here. So if I choose SMS there, uh, this user would only get an, uh, an SMS. Now, as far as setting up the reminder, it's just as easy as, as what we saw there, really. Uh, we create a campaign name.
uh, and this is where we choose the type, either call, SMS, or both. I'll go ahead and choose both for now. Uh, we'll se select the recipient group that uh, belongs to this particular reminder. So you can have multiple recipient groups or multiple reminders per recipient group. Uh, and then you select the SMS caller ID. Now, how it finds this number is it, it's going through the, the managed DID portal and it's looking for any SMS toll-free number that is somehow associated and SMS enabled on the domain. So you could have this going to a reach UC user on the domain. You could have it going to email on the domain. Uh, you could have it as a as a webhook on the domain, as long as it's associated in some form or fashion to to the domain in the managed DID portal. Uh, it will pop down on this list. Now the the messages uh, there is a, a message guide here. Uh, but the message has some examples in it by default. Uh, so we have a bunch of different variables for name, date, time, uh, date, time. And there's different ways you can set up your messages using these variables to include other data. Uh, so ideally, uh, we might want to just say, hi, name, uh, just a reminder of your appointment tomorrow at uh, so and so time, but you can use the variables to set up your message however you want. So, for an example, I'm just going to say hi name, just a re reminder of your appointment tomorrow at time, uh, and just as a courtesy. I'm going to just reply stop to opt out. Now, as far as calling, uh, we're doing the same thing with phone numbers. Uh, we're looking on the domain for any phone number that's associated with the domain. And we have some interesting things uh, in progress for uh, for people who are already using vBroadcast. Uh, and something I, I had just learned about uh, this morning, actually, is we are working on uh, some improving the answering machine detection. So right now uh, we have answering machine detection where it can determine if, if an answering machine or voicemail picked up rather than a real person. Uh, and it can hang up the call or play back a message. But right now uh, it can't determine how long that voicemail greeting is. So it's not actually listening for the beep. But the intro greeting has been put in place. So we recommend that you use a 12 second greeting that encourages the recipient to listen to the introductory message in full. And this is uh, the average time of a voicemail message. Uh, but pretty soon we will have uh, that listen for the beep as well. And you won't need to have an introductory message. So you can go straight into the, the message that you're trying to play to the recipient. Now you can uh, you can uh, when an answering machine comes on, you can play a different message, or you can play uh, the actual message uh, that you have here. Uh, for now, I'm gonna, because I'm not even doing a a call, I'm just going to uh, show you what this is like here. So if you play back a message, you can uh, upload a wave file, or you can do this text to speech. Uh, by default, it will select the similar to SMS, uh, but you can also use different text for the call because obviously we don't need a reply to stop to opt out. Uh, so we'll just set that up. Now, you, here you choose uh, how many days before you want to notify uh, and the time of day that you do want to notify. So if I just say six o'clock, or one minute till six, we'll start sending our campaign. We're gonna start it today and you can set an end date or you can choose never. So this can be an ongoing campaign where you're pulling in appointments from whatever CRM or appointment scheduling platform uh, and it can run forever. Just delete old appointments and go from there. So uh, 
this campaign is live uh, and there is a test button. So we have a send reminder now button and this is really specifically for testing, but it will search for, um, for users who have a specific SMS or call option and then it will, and then you can send your test messages. So I'm just going to proceed into sending. And I should get that message momentarily. And there it is. Um, I can actually open up my Reach UC desktop app to show that message. And there it is. Uh, always happy when a live demo works out correctly. Uh, so now from the next step, uh, we're going to go back and uh, look at the actual API. And this is where uh, it might step some people outside of their comfort zone, but I promise you this is uh, something that's pretty easy to do once you play around with it a little bit. Uh, and that's why I'm going to show you live uh, without practice on, on setting this up. Uh, I've set these up, a, of, I guess in February when we first launched it, I, I set up a Zapier uh, integration and I'm just gonna do it again now. Uh, so if we go back into the recipient group, what we're gonna need is the API key. Oops, I hit the wrong button here. We need to go to edit. And then we're going to pull up the API integration guide. Uh, actually, I already have it open. That oh, that's a message guide. The API integration guide here tells you what you need to do in order to add or remove appointments. Uh, so from here, I will copy this token. I'm just going to throw it onto a text document so I have it for later, and move this to another screen. And we'll create a Google form. Uh, because we have to have some sort of method in of getting the information. So whether this is a CRM or uh, some appointment scheduling application or a Google Calendar, uh, we have to have some way of getting the application or getting the information for the application. So I'm just going to quickly create And this could be something that the receptionist is putting in. All right, so we're going to add SMS call and both, and let's see if we needed any other information here. We need name, phone number, appointment date, appointment time, and phone type. So we are missing the phone number, obviously. Okay, and this form is all set up now. Google Forms is uh, very similar to JotForm if you use JotForm. So you could also obviously use JotForm. Really anything that integrates with Zapier or a tool like Zapier, there's a bunch of them out there. Um, Zapier just happens to be my preference. So we'll create this form. I'm going to preview it of name, time, date, uh, contact method and phone number. Uh, we'll go ahead and fill one out. Uh, let's not restrict this to Sky Switch. We will then uh, grab the link for this. 
you know, Corey, as I'm watching you do this, one of the things we can do with our webinars in the future is we can add this feature to the sign up form and we can notify people by SMS that the webinar is starting in a few minutes. This looks so simple. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. That could easily be done for, for us. And as every time I go into this, I'm thinking about new use cases. Uh, so I'm gonna copy the link, shorten the URL. Uh, we're gonna fill one out. I'll just use my other browser here to fill this out. Yeah, and you could certainly for for like a, a massive reminder type thing where people sign up, you could uh, just include a set time so you don't actually have to uh, have to change the times around. Uh, zero zero, and that's obviously PM, and we'll go so oh, five thirteen. 2020 SMS, and we'll put in one of my other DIDs here. Okay, so we have a form submitted, uh, and I did not name the form, so that might be a little bit harder to find it. We're going to call this uh, appointment webinar. Uh, and from here, we'll go into Zapier and create a new Zap. So what we're going to do, uh, Zapier, in case you don't know and you haven't seen any of my other uh, videos or, or blogs, I, I do use this tool a lot. It will pull data from one application and format it and send it to another one, or you can uh, use it to create triggers. Uh, very useful application. And again, there's a lot like it. Uh, but from here, I'll just uh, search for Google Forms. Uh, and we're going to look for a new response in the spreadsheet. I choose my account, so it'll automatically look in my Google account for this. I'll wait for it to find it. It is not finding it. We might need to give Zapier a, a couple minutes to update here. Uh, yeah. There's where the live demo doesn't go <laughs> as planned. Uh, so we'll just wait a, a couple minutes for the appointment webinar uh, form to show up there. Uh, maybe it's under the untitled form as well. Nope, it's not there yet. All right, so we're stuck in a short waiting cycle. Uh, while we wait on this, uh, we could certainly uh, talk about the uh, the innovation idea. You think that's okay, Andy? Sure. I mean, we should always talk about how we can innovate and how you can do more with SkySwitch. Why don't you dive into that one, Corey? Yeah, so this application, as it's very much open to interpretation as you see we're coming up with new ideas as we talk about it clark is throwing out some interesting ideas here people are uh one thing clark also mentioned was, was someone's using it as reminders for people to pay their bills uh but we're looking for innovative ways to use the application use the appointment reminder application so what we're going to do is is offer up some Sky switch store points, and I don't know if we have a name for those yet or not. Uh, but we're going to offer oh, we up have some the reseller contest running. We have a contest yes. running right now 
where sellers can suggest a name for our uh, program where they earn points for dollars spent inside the SkySwitch store. So we're going to offer up some points to those who come up with some really innovative ideas. Yeah, and, and more points for for the people who come up with the most innovative ideas uh, and share them for uh, uses of the appointment reminder, whether you're uh, creating your own applications for integrations uh, or or whether you're using third-party tools like Zapier here. Uh, so the exact amount, I think, was, uh, I don't want to say it without <laughs> knowing it. Uh, off the top of my head, I think it was, I don't know, Emily, can you say what the amount was? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I'm actually not sure. I think that's something that Andy might know, or or I, I'm not sure. I think we're going to go, you know, we'll put it in the newsletter of what the amount is, and the, we might even tier it based on the type of award it is. However, the, the important thing is there's the sky's the limit here with regards to the overall capabilities of what you can do with the combination of appointment reminders, Google Forms, an integration app, whether it's IFTTT, Zapier, or something you build with um, companies like Trey that offer customization of integrations for things that don't exist. The big thing here is you can tie it into CRM systems, you can tie it into appointment systems. As long as there's a way to get that data out of your CRM or appointment system or reminder system, then it can be integrated somehow with RV broadcast platform. And at that point, there's the opportunity to send out a text message or a voice reminder. So this, literally, I said the sky's the limit. Your imagination determines what you can do. And when you have people like Clark innovating the way they are, I think we can see that there's a lot of potential for resellers to join in and make money on this like Clark is. He's certainly charging for his integration, as you can also, but then share those with us so that just like any other you know, community, you're helping each other. And right now, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, resellers helping resellers is a common theme that we're hearing. And this type of information sharing, knowledge uh, sharing and knowledge exchange is really what you wanna do. Um, we're getting close to the top of the hour. Um, Corey's going to keep working on trying to solve his Zapier integration. Maybe it's a time delay that Zapier sometimes has on um, resetting and notifying, or perhaps Google is even down. So we'll worry about that later. Corey, we've had a bunch of questions that have come in. I'm going to dive into them. Um, I'm also sure. going to share some comments. Sure. Robert Harney says, what would be great is if you have a private video training section available only to SkySearch resellers where you go into detail on how different tasks can, such as how to set up multiple phones or one extension could be used. That's, in, that's tied to you describing that you're the head of support as our vice president. It, can you do things like that? I mean, inside SkySearch University, is that something you, you and William are setting up? Yeah, so that would be uh, a little bit more on William's side of the uh, of the house as far as uh, SkySwitch University goes. But everything inside of uh, Talent LMS or SkySwitch University is uh, exclusive to the resellers, uh, where the the docs are are kind of open to the public. Uh, but we'll certainly make sure that gets back to William, where uh, he implements the reseller training inside of SkySwitch University. Another question from Robert is, will SkySwitch offer deployment services to allow these integrations, which we can then resell to our clients to be added to other tools like Zapier? I, I think you've mentioned Zapier a few times, but there's other tools. You know, what, what do you know this can work with already? Uh, really, anything can, can work with Zapier. And I'm not sure if we're going to offer deployment services or or any kind of uh, actual integrations with, with Zapier that we'll be supporting. But what we're trying to do, or what I'm trying to do, is throw out 
ideas. A lot of people are intimidated by APIs and webhooks and action URLs. Uh, I've, I'm frequently myself trying to just to throw out ideas to the the reseller group and uh, and just people I talk to on a regular basis of what you can do with a tool like Zapier. Um, so you'll see frequent examples. Uh, while we're not going to be uh, supporting or, or rolling out uh, Zapier ourselves uh, with with integrations, uh, it's more just just an educational example on this is what you can do. This is how you can do it easily without being a programmer. Question from Ben Rush: Is there a way for SMS receivers to reply with a Y for yes to confirm appointments, like I do with my dentist app? Yeah, so just as what Clark was talking about, you could you could tie in the inbound SMS to the SMS responder application, uh, and and go from there. So you could tie in multiple applications and and use this uh, however you want. Uh, you could. You could send it to a, an email distribution group, or uh, there's there's a number of ways that, that you could respond to text messages or uh, questions or confirm appointments with the responder and an API. So really, you could you could integrate from start to finish with the the automation of the appointment reminders to confirming the appointment reminder. Uh, it would just take a little bit of, of trial and error more than anything. Mike Reynolds wants to know, does this work with MMS through our gateway? Uh, it does not. It is only SMS at this point. And uh, there are a, a number of problems with, with MMS that just make it the delivery rates much more difficult. So I don't think MMS will be coming to the appointment reminder anytime soon. A question, another question from Ben Rush. Is there an integration with the Platypus CRM system? Uh, I have not heard of that. Let's see if Zapier has an integration with them. Uh, so some, some different uh, applications as well, some different CRMs have the ability to send webhooks directly and you can format your, your webhook as a JSON uh, uh, JSON post message, and if you can do that, I said it was platypus. I don't see that. Joel? Yeah, I don't see that in here. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. At least not right now. But you could certainly. This is this just is, one tool. You could. You there are other tools like Zapier, so you could certainly look for uh, different integration tools. Uh, that do a similar function, and all the end result of what you need to do with with a tool like this is is get some data and then be able to reformat it uh, and send it out as a JSON uh, uh, HTTP POST request. Uh, so all in all, it's it's what you're doing is is fairly simple, and and you, you may, it may be even worth hiring a uh, a programmer for an hour of work to, to achieve that kind of integration. Uh, just depends on, on how much programming is involved, obviously. Another question from David Boyd. What constitutes a valid sign-up? Is it okay to get a verbal okay, or do you need them to check a box or send you something in writing? Basically, what uh, I think we're getting from David is, what's permission? Yeah, uh, that's a good question, and uh, I don't know the I don't know the real answer to that. If this was me, I would want to have some sort of electronic or or actual uh, paper trail to go back on to say that the person signed up. Uh, I, I think we would need to look into to the FCC guidelines, but I I also think there's some sort of inherent uh, trust there that. Uh, if your customer says, would you like to sign up uh, over the counter to the, the end user and they say yes, then uh, then that may be good enough. I don't want to speak on the legalities of that, though, because I could be completely off base. When in doubt, leave it out. But my, my answer to David is, David, always send somebody an opt-in confirmation message if you are concerned about them coming back to you. Say, 
please opt in by sending yes and you're done. Um, question from Ben Rush again. This one's an interesting one, Corey. Is there a way for multiple end users to be able to send from within a large organization? So let's say that there's a lot of people working within a company, there's multiple departments that operate, but they all operate independently, such as the customer for sending shift reminders. Yeah, there certainly is. There, there's actually uh, multiple ways you can do it. You could you could send uh, emails to a distribution group, and as if if those users have the ability to send as the distribution email uh, group name, that would work. Uh, we have a we have a Rocket Chat integration uh, for sending group text. Uh, is it's still out there we we haven't pushed it because of some limitations on the code but uh it's still a possibility um and you could also uh get copies of text messages from from one user using reach uc uh so you could uh just send new text from another user uh when, once one user receives the sms Uh, Michael McIntosh wants to know, is there a way to send a report of an SMS not sent? Uh, Michael McIntosh is one of our onboarding guys. And it sounds like he might be trying to stump us. Uh, but uh, I don't know if, if you'll get a report of SMSs that are not sent in an automated fashion. However, you can go into V broadcast and you can see the uh, reminder detailed report uh, where SMSs were sent or not per campaign. Uh, so if Aaron I choose Dieter my wants to know, yeah, Aaron Dieter wants to know if there's an additional training doc available or a walkthrough. Well, first, there's a great video that Corey did about three or four months ago on appointment reminders, which should be almost a primer that everybody watches. It was great, Corey. You did a fantastic job on that one. But do you have any yeah, other docs in in there that we can that you can point people like Aaron to? Yeah, there's a, a couple things. Uh, so you can go back into the SkySwitch.com blog, and then just search for appointment reminders, uh, and you'll find that that video. Uh, if you want a another demonstration. Uh, here, it was posted on February 6th. Uh, we also have a walkthrough. So if you go into our docs, you can find uh, and just search for vBroadcast. You'll find the setup for vBroadcast as far as the trunk setup. And then there's individual sections for, uh, for call campaigns, SMS campaigns, and appointment reminders. So this will walk you through step by step and give you individual definitions of what some of the terms and, and different things do. Uh, and this is fully up to date, ready to go. Uh, so just search for v Great. So Darren, There's one more last question from Darren also. And I think Darren, you should set up a call with Corey. He wants to see how the call feature works, but he also questions, is there a spot upload professional recording feature available? So a few weeks ago, we had Donna from Advantage IVR who can record all these. Is there a way to do a, a spot upload for that Donna voiceover? Yeah. yeah, so as you're creating the campaign, this was uh, one of the things that we, we revamped in October of 2019 when this platform was uh, went through that major rewrite. Uh, but as you're creating a reminder, uh, and if you don't have the upload already uploaded to the playback, uh, when you choose to play back a message, you can select to upload a new file so it doesn't break your, your workflow uh, and then choose your WAV file and, and upload it there so you don't have to go into another tab to upload this, which was a uh, an undersight before, but uh, it's as, working as you would hope it would work now. Okay, so if you all want an appointment, you know how to get in touch with Corey. He can give you one-on-one -on -one advice on how to do this, appointment, how to set up appointment reminders, how to integrate appointment reminders. Um, I want to thank Corey. We, we've run a little long. We're at um, almost 10 minutes after the hour. I want to thank Clark, of course, for being our guest today and doing so well as one of the newest SkySwitch resellers. I know you're 
your goal is eventually club 1000 so may the force be with you and may you hit that number sooner rather than later of course we couldn't do this without the amazing help of emily vasquez who does such a good job at putting all this together we'll be sending out um the winners of the swag pack we've got five of you so keep an eye out on that and when we notify you that you've won something it really helps if you confirm your address especially now um, a lot of you aren't necessarily working in your office and we ship these out and we want you to wear these really cool hats shirts socks and make use of the pop sockets and everything else so five of you will be lucky winners today and to all of you attend who attended we really thank you for being here we'll be back same time next week 11 a.m on tuesday uh may 19th and we're going to be joined by the folks from uh, i believe it's snow next week um, am i right emily snow is going to be doing a webinar on uh, the changing world of where we're working and delivering some really cool tools. So we're looking forward to having the Stone folks with us next Tuesday, live at 11, and of course, on replay. We'll have an email out to all of you, letting you know when you can download the slides and listen to Corey and Clark talk all about appointment reminders. Thanks a lot, and have a great week.